talk about your freaky dreams. My subconscious needs to get a life. No need to go in there till it's time to cook. As long as it's not time to cook, I might as well stay out of the kitchen. What's up? Do you ever see anyone else when you're out there snowshoeing? I'll see that Yanni guy sometimes. I'll be plodding along and he'll go zooming by. Those skis of his are like rockets, man. He's all like zippy zoom. Do you ever hear explosions? Yeah, and they freak me out. It doesn't take a very big sound to trigger an avalanche. And when you're out there by yourself, nothing will ruin your day faster than a couple of tons of snow roaring your way at a hundred miles an hour. Tell me about it. Would it be all right if I borrowed your snowshoes? Mmm, no. I don't really have to borrow yours. Any old pair would do. Well, in that case, no. What's the matter with you? Afraid of cooties? Let her use your snowshoes. I've only got one pair, and they're like precious, you know? Sorry, dude, the answer's no. What can I say? I was just wondering, what planet do you most identify with? Planet X. I'm sorry, I'm in an our solar system. Planet X? But there is no Planet X. There will be. So, you identify with Planet X. Planet X. That's my answer and I'm sticking to it. Nice talking to you. Happy trails. Hello again. I know this is going to sound like a strange question, but what planet do you most identify with? Hmm. I guess it would be Mars. You know, that whole god of war thing? I should have known. I'd better get going. Drop by any time. Hi, uh, Lupe, this is Nancy Drew again. Is everything all right? The wolf's fine. I just have some questions. Like what? This is going to sound like a really weird question, but from what side of the bed do you usually get up? Why in the world do you want to know that? Oh, please don't try to make me explain. Well, it's a harmless question, I suppose. Let's see. I get up on my left side. If I were to ask you which planet you most identify with, which one would you say? Earth. No, wait. Make that Venus. No, Earth. No, actually Venus. No, Earth. No offense, dear, but that's a very silly question. Tell me about it. 
So, are you kind of an expert on wolves? Oh, good heavens, no. Although I probably know more about them than most people do, which unfortunately isn't saying much. Things like what? Well, I know that a wolf that lives by itself, like the one up there at the lodge, a lone wolf, if you will, a wolf like that is called a disperser. And I know that 95% of the wolf's natural habitat down here in the lower 48 states has disappeared. And I know some people, a lot of people, couldn't care less. But it seems to me that wolves have just as much right to go about their business in this country as we humans do. After all, they were here first. Why can't the group you belong to just capture the wolf, take it out to the middle of nowhere, and let it go? Because, unfortunately, there's really no such place as nowhere anymore. We humans are, or can be, everywhere. Plus, wolves can travel great distances. Contact with humans would be inevitable. And since this wolf has obviously lost its fear of humans, it would be an easy target for anyone prone to shoot first and ask questions later. No, a sanctuary is the only place where it would be truly safe. What's a sanctuary? It's a facility where wolves can live out their lives in as natural a setting as possible in the company of other wolves. You mean, like a zoo? No, sanctuaries are usually not open to the general public. And while educating visitors about wolves is certainly one of their goals, their primary concern is preserving the animals they take in. Unfortunately, the more humans encroach on wolves' natural habitat, the more crowded the sanctuaries become. Aren't there any government agencies that can take care of the wolf? For the most part, and especially up there, wolves are considered to be pests. If a government agency got involved, it would take care of the wolf all right, permanently. Why didn't you just come out and tell the people at Icicle Creek Lodge that you were there to protect the wolf? Because I assumed, and quite correctly as it turns out, that very few people there would be sympathetic to my cause. Had I not been undercover, they may have tried to foil my efforts. Instead, I was able to foil theirs. For a while, at least. It gets so cold here at night. Will the wolf be okay? Not only are wolves built to withstand cold temperatures, but they know instinctively what to do to survive in extreme conditions. If they didn't, they would have disappeared from the Earth eons ago. Did you ever hear any explosions while you were staying at Icicle Creek Lodge? Yes, as a matter of fact, I heard several. Do you have any idea what caused them? My first thought was that Ollie had completely lost it and was going after the wolf with explosives. But when I realized that even he wasn't that stupid, I assumed it was someone clearing an avalanche or a downed tree or something. While we're on the subject of explosions, did anyone ever figure out what made the bunkhouse blow up like that? The sheriff says it was plastic explosives. Wow, that's serious. No offense, but it sounds to me like instead of hiring a new maid, the owner of the lodge should have hired herself a detective. Yeah. I'd better get going. Call me the instant anything happens. Can't check that off yet. Oops, ha can't check that off yet. That's finished. Can't check that off yet. Still need to do that. Can't check that off yet. Still need to do that.
It's way too cold to go out there now. No need to go in there till it's time to cook. As long as it's not time to cook, I might as well stay out of the kitchen. Order up. Thank <laughs> you. 
No, and by the way, don't go adding paprika to Lou Talbot's food anymore. He hates paprika. Nancy, hi. You finished with that survey yet? I sure am. Good girl. I'll just turn on my fax machine here. Okay, let her rip. Nice work, Nancy. According to the survey, our perp is none other than our bird-watching champion snowshoer, Bill Kessler. But Bill Kessler likes to ice fish, Guadalupe Comillo is the one who likes to bird watch, Yanni Valkstaya is a champion skier, and Lou Talbot likes to snowshoe. But you were kind of right. I mean, you did pretty much describe everyone at the lodge. I did? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I did. You know, maybe I just need to look at the survey data from a different perspective or something. Yeah, maybe the answer is there after all, and I just gotta shuffle things around in order to see it. Oh, hey, uh, before I forget, Chantel said when you finished the survey, I was supposed to pass some numbers on you. Said it was the combination of something? Yes, to the display case. What is it? 7669. Anything else I can do for you? I'd better go. Always a player. That did it. 